Let's start off just talking about the college admissions scandal. Did it catch you by su surprise? Complete surprise. We're all familiar with uh, some schools ad admitting uh, uh, athletes who are phony students, but we haven't seen uh, phony athletes admitted uh, uh, trying to become students before. Yes, it was uh, something I certainly didn't see coming. You know, there, um, this is something that has really touched a nerve with parents around the country. I hear it uh, talked about it just about everywhere. And there's a new poll from USA Today out um, that is saying that by more than three to one, the people that they have surveyed are against not only this extreme sort of cheating that we've heard about in this scandal, but just about ways that they think that uh, the wealthy and the, the well-connected have advantages when it comes to college admissions. What, what do you think about that? I think it's justified. Of course, there are all kinds of preferences going on in college admissions. Uh, we, it's pretty obvious that Asian students have been excluded at some schools uh, uh, by uh, some sort of covert uh, quota arrangements. So, um, uh, I, but I do think in this case that uh, the reaction is warranted. I think a lot of us uh, share it. You know, there, there have been questions that have been raised about legacies, about uh, people whose parents are able to donate money. Uh, where, do, where do you come down on any of that? Because uh, a lot of these are things that a lot of us knew were probably happening for a long time, but um, it's a pretty opaque process, and it, it's hard for people on the outside to really understand what's happening. How big of a problem do you think it is? Oh, it, it depends on the, on the case. I think what's maybe being missed here is that uh, this particular incident, which is very juicy with celebrities and so forth involved, um, is really more about the parents than the students. Mm. And the irony is if these parents, uh, I think they're, they're uh, whether they recognize it or not, they're seeking status for themselves more than success for their children. We did some uh, research uh, with the Gallup organization uh, here at Purdue a few years ago, showed pretty conclusively that, uh, as one author put it, where you go is not who you'll be. It's much more about what, whether a student applies herself or himself at school, how rigorous that school is, which is something we really aspire to at Purdue. Um, and what I think I see increasingly is, is families seeking out value finally in higher ed, not believing that a, t a big sticker price connotes quality, not looking just for a nameplate uh, that may reflect past prestige. Um, and in the pursuit of value, uh, we're seeing lots and lots of applications, record numbers at our in our case, and a lot of them coming from families that in a different time might have uh, sought out one of these uh, now uh, very high-priced private schools. Um, I, I know this is something that you've written about yourself in your annual letters, um, just the idea that state schools in the last decade or so have taken on a lot more students internationally, a lot more out-of-state students. And I think that's been something many schools were kind of hoping to do as a way to uh, offset the budget pinch they were getting from state budgets that were shut down during the Great Recession. Um, how, how big of an issue is that? What do you do with it? And is it okay if a state school has 25% of their students coming in from either out-of-state or internationally when they're getting funds from the state? I think it's okay. It has to be kept in balance, like all things. We've actually dialed down somewhat the number of, or the, of uh, international students at our school, although we're mm -hmm. still a pretty diverse place. I think it enriches the experience uh, for the uh, domestic students uh, who are here. Um, in addition, uh, by the way, this is about a $40 billion export industry for the country because so much of the world wants to come here to study. It's a great tribute to our American universities. And um, it's also a, an opportunity to capture talent. About one in six of the international students, about the same percentage of the out-of-state students who come to Purdue, take their first job in Indiana. It's a brain gain opportunity that, uh, that I think serves our state and I assume other states pretty well. So um, in, in some reasonable proportion, I think it's, a, it's an appropriate goal. And, um, you know, it's, it's certainly not out of whack with the amount of money that we are receiving from the state, which is 20 or 20 some percent of our budget. Yeah, you, oh, oh. just to follow up on yep. this really quickly, uh, President Daniels, you are one of the few people I've, uh, one of the few people in colleges who I've seen admit to this, who have kind of taken it on and thought about it really thoughtfully. Um, so I, I guess I wonder what is the right proportion, because there are schools that have a lot higher numbers of, of international students that are coming in uh, than Purdue does. And it's not to sound protectionist or to sound like we don't want people coming in, but 
when I look at state schools versus when I was trying to get into them, how much harder it is today, I think that does raise questions about people who thought, okay, our kids, my kids are going to be able to go to the same school I did, my same state school, but it's a lot tougher today than it used to be. I don't know what an ideal percentage would be. We've brought ours down into, to a single digit, and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with, with that. It's a lot easier uh, to get in. I should put it the other way around. It's a lot harder to get into Purdue from out of state than it is from inside our state. And Hoosier young people still make up a majority of our students. But I, I do think it's an appropriate mix. And look, let's, let's also be honest. But we've held tuition um, constant here at Purdue for six years. We're going to do it for at least two more less expensive to go to our school in unadjusted dollars today than it was in 2012. And uh, the fact that we do have a healthy percentage of out-of-state students who pay much more uh, here helps us keep uh, those uh, tuitions down. So, uh, Governor, it's that time. Uh, and I, I, we could meet really early. Uh, we could meet really early here, Cincinnati and, and Is this another Cincinnati thing? Uh, it, yeah. We could meet. Uh, the only thing is, you're a number three seed, and since he's a number seven, so I need some. I need like twice as much uh, of a payoff. Now, last time did you? you we, it was Montgomery and Ribs, or was it Skyline Chili that I was gonna? Do you have anything worth sending me from from where you are? If if I win? Oh yeah. You sure? Okay. Oh yeah. I'll send. I'll send you one of America's finest tenderloins. Of course, I don't expect to have to pay off, so it's an easy <laughs> offer to make. Purdue's been hot. Purdue, Purdue is, they're peaking. I think. Hey, let me ask you: Are you, are you like happy Indiana isn't even in? I mean, were you like laughing about that, or, or you're, you wish everybody was in? No, there are rivals, but uh, you know, in in all honesty, uh, uh, you know, I root for them when, the, except for two times a year. Yeah. And also, he to, former governor. so you're number three, and this is a seven plus. You have the greatest sports movie called Hoosiers. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's also should, you should have to pay more for that. But let's watch, okay? Because it could happen. Cincinnati does have a couple of uh, tough. You know, it's going to be. They'd have to be either. They might have to be Tennessee. You might have to be Villanova, which is doable, I, I think. But uh, we could meet really early. So let's. We'll have you back on. Well, okay? if we do, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll resist the urge to gloat. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, uh, all right. How about if if I win, uh, any of my relatives get to come into Purdue? No questions asked. Will that work for you? <laughs> well, we said that uh, you know we do have that so-called holistic review, and it might even encompass <laughs> like your relatives. What you said. Crappy students used to use athletics to get in. Now, now you you can you know I never even rode, and I'm going in on the road. That's that's uh, that, that was a good line. Anyway, Governor, thanks. very quickly, there is a, a new bill being introduced, bipartisan bill, by one Republican, one Democrat, who are talking about income share agreements with the universities, where students would be allowed to repay tuition using a percentage of their future earnings. Is that a good idea? It's a great idea. We have a, the largest program right now in the country at Purdue, and it allows. A lot of our students to leave with no debt or much less debt than they would have because an income share agreement is equity, not debt, and the risk is on the investor, not the student. And so, yes, a bill that uh, clarifies some of the rules that, uh, that have made some other schools cautious would be great. We've got 20 or 30 schools coming here uh, in about a month who are curious about this and would like to open up their own programs. And, yes, Congress could help just by making sure that the uh, boundaries are well understood.